I'm Christian Abbott. I'm Nathan Lavender. I'm Sean Abbott. And this is the Red Mist Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Red Mist Podcast, Season 2, Episode 11, the Sergio Perez, Number 11, Red Bull Racing Episode, the Minister of Defense. On tonight's episode, we have a couple special guests. We have Alec Vidal from Touring Car Championship. We also have Derek Moore, friend of the show. Also, we'll discuss NASCAR at Phoenix, the prologue at Sebring. We'll discuss, slightly, IndyCar testing at Barber real quick. And then we'll close it out with a look towards Formula One and this weekend at Jeddah. Yeah, so uh, to start off the show, we're going to have Alec Vidal come in here and talk about uh, TKC's season finale for the Winter Series that's coming up this weekend. So, Alec. Hi, how are you all doing? Good, how about you? Pretty good. Yeah, so... uh Currently, we're heading into our last race of the winter season, and currently we have five people in it for the championship, um, Nathan being one of those five. He's currently in second place, 12 points behind the championship leader, Benjamin Braley. And, yeah, another race at Monza. Uh it's a staple track of the championship. Uh, if you guys don't know what Monza is, it is a track located underneath the Foxwoods Casino. And it has three different levels of the track. Um, we use the gas-powered Sodi carts, the SR5s. And they reach speeds of 45 miles an hour easily average speed of 35 so quick track very technical and yeah it's exciting to see who's gonna come out on top uh, especially given the uh, prize structure for uh the winner of this race and and the winner of the championship so what what do you guys have for prizes um so for Monza, we have a specific prize that the Northeast Carning Challenge is providing, which we will get back to them later. Um, so they offered a free race entry for the winner of the Monza Foxwoods GP. They also are offering a full season pass to the top the highest point score from our two monza races and the r1 race and then for the championship we have a free race weekend at the northeast karting challenge with a go-kart provided um in the ka class the second place winner will get two practice days in our ka cart and third place will get one practice day in the ka cart wow that's quite the prize um <laughs> nate you got it sounds like with you second in points you know you you got a pretty good shot here to try and uh try and get a ride <laughs> well i mean you know there's a chance and uh, i'll tell you what last week really did not work out in my favor uh, but i i always believe in that there's you know in, in any championship season there's a mulligan round, you know, and I was kind of waiting on this. So I'm thinking I got that mulligan round out of the way and I'm just going full court press going into this round. And there's a chance. So, I mean, you know, in casino terms, right? I mean, I'm all in on this. So <laughs> it's going to be really exciting. 
Oh, that's awesome. Um, so, Alec, kind of looking ahead, too. So this is going to be the last round of the winter season. So t- uh, typically, from what I've seen you guys do, you have a summer season as well. So is that going to be the case moving forward for this year? Yeah, so we're going to start off um, another summer season. Uh, currently, it's looking like we're going to be going to English Town and United Karting a lot. Um those are two tracks that uh, we're both very close to. Um, so that's that's what it's looking like for, for this summer. Um, the real changes are coming for the winter season next year, which will actually consist of various exhibition races as opposed to a full championship. So each race will be, will award the top three with actual prizes as opposed to just points or medals and a trophy. Um, So now for each round of the winner series, you can win a prize if you come in the top three. Wow, that sounds pretty enticing. Right? Um, that's why I'm, you know, there, Christian. So, I, I know, I know. I'll, I'll make my, I'll make my debut someday. Yes, <laughs> you heard it here. Let's go. So, uh, Alec, you mentioned about the New England Carding Challenge. So, you, it sounds like TKC and uh, NEKC have formed a pretty good bond uh, over this past couple months. I would say. Yeah, definitely. The uh, the owner of the series, Jim Paulette, is a great guy. Uh, you know, our, we share similar similar values, um, especially regarding racing and how races should be promoted. And yeah, I mean, their their outlook is just an overall fun and enjoyable perspective. Um, you know, they're willing to do things differently to other championships and they actually started this with the first race of the NEKC season being a ice race at the Danbury arena. So that was a a race on a flat oval track made out of an ice rink. Yeah. And that I gotta say, I went Friday. I don't know how I missed you. Um, <laughs> with with how we actually small of a were not on track on Friday. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we had, we had major card issues. I gotcha. Um, but yeah, that when I went Friday and just seeing the first first bit of running there, it it looked super fun. And I mean, I I for one, it was it was great to go down there and check it out. But I I can tell you for sure, I think next year it's. I'll, I'm definitely looking to make an entry if it happens again. Yeah, definitely. And these races are, are really interesting. You know, they're only four laps. Um, you don't really get a practice. You go directly into the heat races. So you're going into your first race with no practice. And you're, I mean, really going into each race with no practice because the track is constantly changing as the ice is being carved up and, and cleaned up and whatnot. Yeah, but I mean that. Uh, yeah, I, I guess that kind of is the uh, the characteristic of short track racing, you know. Yeah. Um, and it's it's really interesting because the the track really really stays true to the to the short track name. I mean, it's it's almost a circle. You know, that's how short the the oval track is, and. You know, it, it provides a different challenge because, you know, you're not going out onto a straightaway and staying like that. You're you're driving almost in a complete circle. Almost. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean it, it seemed uh like a couple of guys that were out there had, had the uh had the lines down to a point where they were pretty much just just sliding the car at the entire time and getting it uh pointed in the right direction. Yeah, definitely. There was a couple standout drivers who definitely came a little bit more prepared. 
than the rest of us. But, uh, you know, this, this race was all for fun. Um, there's no prizes or points or anything. We just wanted to come out, have a good time, and hopefully uh, we'll set up more of these races with them in the future. Um, you know, we're talking about a possibly a full series of just ice races. Oh, my God. I have a question. I have a question. Did you guys run studded tires, or did you have uh, special compounds or anything you used to race on ice? Um, so there's a couple different options. What we did is we took used wet tires, and we put studs into them. Um, you can also buy specific ice tires, which I guess they're just, they just operate better in the cold. Um, but those offer a little bit more grip, and that the guys at the front of that race were running the ice tires with the studs. Um, and, you know, it, it's definitely interesting, too, because you have to get the stud count right. Um, we didn't use enough studs, so when we went out there, we were sliding all over the place. And right. The, the couple guys that had gotten the stud amount correct were cruising past all of us. I mean... It took him maybe like a turn to pass us. <laughs> Just ripping through the corners. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, overall, it's a, it's a great time. Um, the series is, is definitely interesting because, you know, you're not normally around um, bike guys in karting. And they're also mostly Canadian. You know, it's an international series based out of Canada. So the the overall vibe there is a lot different. It, it's it's very like casual in a way, um, which just makes for a really good time, as opposed to you know being over competitive and, and shooting for the win and everything. Yeah, because the the series that was running there and hosting this whole event was called extreme international ice racing um that yes that allowed uh the new england karting challenge to come in and join for a couple of races yep all right um well alec i gotta say i think uh you definitely got a great series finale coming up it sounds like and you definitely have some some fun stuff looking forward into the future for the summer and the next uh winter season um which is all great and then uh obviously with this this new ice carding uh stuff it's it's looking like there's a lot of potentials and opportunities moving forward yeah definitely uh, the future holds a lot for for carding so definitely watch out Look for races at your nearby tracks. We'll we'll be everywhere. <laughs> Sweet. All well, right. I, I actually got a question for uh, Alec. Alec, uh, who do you who do you think is going to win the championship on this Sunday? Mm. You know that's a tough question. Um, going into the final rounds of the summer season, we were in a similar situation, but you know I guess we we didn't. I, we, we, we thought Alex was more of a dark horse than he really was, and the championship ended up being decided in the final race. Um, you know, it was Alex versus Ben, whoever finished ahead. And that's almost what you have here. You know, Ben needs to finish basically in, in the second final for Nathan to overtake him. And especially at this track, uh, you know, the, the carts are not the main carts being used, so they're not necessarily maintained in the same way. So that really throws a lot of uh, chance up in the air. You know, Ben, ben could get a bad cart. Nathan could get a, could get a bad cart. So I, I, think, I think Nathan, I think, hey, hey. I think his walk is, I, is, is I, here. He hasn't had a couple of good rounds in a while, he, but I can feel this race. Nathan's got it. Oh, Alec. I mean, not that I'm asking the question or anything, but I, I, I like your pick. I like your pick a lot. And for anyone listening, we, we paid Alec to say that. 
<laughs> How much did you pay him? I, 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 can't, I, I can't recall. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Apparently enough. <laughs> enough. Yeah. Sweet. Well, I like your pick, Alec. I gotta say. Mm-hmm. So, we'll see what happens. I'm hopeful. Yeah. We'll see. Alrighty. Any other questions we got for Alec? I got none. Well, thank you, Alec. Yeah, of course. I, I love being on the show with you guys. Yeah. Um, and obviously, Alec, you're... Sounds like you're going to stay stay for the rest of the show, too. So uh, let's uh, get it moving to NASCAR. Yes? Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead, Nate. This. So, uh, Sean, you know, I know it's your favorite topic, so I'll just gladly detail this just for you. Because I'll tell you what, I I would have picked Kevin Harvick to win this race, come, come this race, because he, he seriously has the most wins, I think, out of all active drivers to win here. So it seemed like it was going to be a Kevin Harvick date to begin with, if you're asking me. Um, but it it began uh, quite well, you know. There is a uh, you know it was pretty, a clean start, and then Eric Almorola was driving the wheels off at Sean. He lost a wheel, um, and so that really kind of set him back. And there was some good racing, you know. It, there was three wide moments. Um, one in particular, Chris Buescher, Chase Briscoe. And Daniel Suarez battling for position is pretty good. But you know what I like about this track, Sean? They, they visit this track twice. And so they, the championship round is at the end, and they you know have a chance to check it out early on, earlier on in the season. So this, this race is pretty critical. And at the beginning, you did see Kyle Larson and uh, William Byron kind of break away, but Kevin Harvick was still sticking with them for the majority of the race. Um. And my homeboy, Brian Kozlowski, he was, he was in the top 10 all day, but he slicked back. But then throughout the sequence of the stages, restarts, it was looking to be Kevin Harvick, who was gaining time, gaining time away from the Hendrick cars. And sure enough, I, I think... Okay, Harrison Burton lost a wheel, or got a flat tire, rather. But I also heard maybe Jeff Burton was uh, up there trying to see what, alter the race somehow. I don't know. I'm just messing. But I cannot believe it's an overtime finish. I mean, I know, Sean, you expect it. But I'm kind of, you know, let's see what happens. It's the way the script works. No, that's not. No, no, no. You watch, you watch. There's the next week, Atlanta, right? It, there's no chance of that being an overtime race, right? right? <laughs> zero, so, zero percent chance. Zero percent chance. Right. So uh, I'll tell you what. Maybe Randy LaJoy wins it after all, but who knows? Randy LaJoy? Um, or you mean Corey LaJoy? Or, Corey LaJoy. The, all right, not the LaJoy. But I'd like yeah. to see Randy out there. Yeah, yeah Randy, personally. yeah. That'd be kind of, <laughs> you know, vintage, but... I can't. Yeah, right. Jeez, right. I can't Nate, I Nate, that. let's um. Anyway, let's go back to something you said. Let's go back to something oh. you said earlier. Um, yeah. Once again, wheels fall off cars in NASCAR. And, and, and what does that mean, Sean? Are people lo- not getting um, all five lug nuts? Oh wait. Nate, it's one <laughs> center lug. One. Yeah. It's one center lug. How are they missing it? Yeah, how are they missing it? When they can I, keep I, I them on tell. cars in Formula One, they can keep them on cars in IndyCar, they can keep them on sports cars, they use center lug nuts. Didn't I didn't watch this part of the race, but I, I heard it, I was listening to it on the radio. Didn't that wheel break and not actually just fall off? Or am I wrong? Anything can I don't you know confirm or deny? That. No, I, I cannot okay. confirm or deny this. Uh, I'll take. I mean, I'll take. I'm gonna. Go hopefully, it, hopefully it was so Derek. What Derek cool. said that was was right. <laughs> but yeah, right. all right. Anyways, moving on. Way. And we can talk so, about we can so, talk about one lugs and supercars too soon. Um. Oh, but Sean, you're missing on the best part. So on the green <laughs> wet checker, 
William Byron. Uh, so everyone went down pit road, and the two Hendrick cars got up front, and I was thinking it was going to be Kyle Larson. Yeah, I, I know. It, it must be the France family or someone. Uh, so or or let's go back to uh, Thursday or Friday when certain s- components from the Hendrix cars were confiscated by NASCAR. Yes. Which we have not which we have not heard anything for from. And uh mm-hmm. you know, last year we had, you know, RFK bolstering up their front bumpers. So what are uh what's Hendrick doing? What shady things are they doing? You know what? It could be anything at this point. I, I really you know seem to be running up front quite a bit. Who knows? Well, as for the last two races, yes. But All right. um, anyways, go on. Anyway, yeah. So on the restart, uh, you know, William Byron just gets a really good restart, and then when it was maybe going to be a chance for Harvick or Larson to get up, they went three wide per second, and that was never going to work. And you know, at least to catch up to William Byron, so they lost a ton of time there, and it was settled. There you go. I just, yep. man. Harvick got robbed of victory at Phoenix, right. I guess. And then say. we did have some, some NASCAR fireworks. Wouldn't be a NASCAR race without some with uh, Denny and Ross. Dennis, I and, know. And Denny, I know. And Denny admitted to taking Ross out. <laughs> On so. his podcast, of all yeah. places. So. Well, there we go. And, we'll, well, see. we'll see if he gets hauled in on that one. <clears throat> Yeah, that'd be interesting to see. I, I mean, if anything, it would it would have come out Tuesday because usually Tuesdays when the penalties the, the come hammer out. falls. Yeah, yeah. if, if there's going right. to be any penalties in next okay. case. so I think they got away. So we're, we're off to Atlanta now. Five hundred big miles there, or five hundred yep. kilometers. Yeah, I, I think five hundred miles. Ones. Okay, yeah. all right. That looks can't wait. Yeah, oh yeah, I know. It's salivating. salivating. I, I can't wait. It's going to be Let's good. Let's do a yeah. uh, quick quick. Quick, uh, see who's locked in. Uh, once Let's again, William Byron's locked in. I would and say so. Kurt, Two Ky- Kyle Bush no locked in. Ish. He's locked in. Again. No, again. And our, there our is Daytona 500 no winner is logged in. <laughs> locked in. So we're how yeah, many races sure into is. how many races into the season now? Four. Yeah, this is the fourth round. How, how many uh, rounds? How many rounds are in the pre-chase? The regular season, Sean, yes. is uh, 26 races. 26 yes. races. 22 more, 22 we're more races. Essentially, we're at the quarter pole. Two of those races okay, have been two of the races have been won by William Byron. Yep, I would say. He's I say there's a sure. high probability there'll be some other winners and some duplicate winners. Yeah, I mean, so I think I, our I our, li- our our list of 16 will be. F- 15 from the winners. Yeah, and and I mean... And one point guy. Just think, if, if, like an, a crazy early assumption, right? If there's someone that has an absolute like crazy amount of points, such as like... We'll, we'll, Alex Bowman? Alex Bowman, right? And he doesn't get a win, and there's like 17 different winners. Yeah. Well, one of those winners, Sean, is going to get kicked out because, you know... I, more, more than 16. I, I don't. And then... Yeah. Oh, we'll the, see. And then, and then, yeah. yeah. Right. And we'll, then we'll the person that is maybe first in points doesn't get it. Right. Well, anyways, it doesn't matter. 16 winners will get in that's, <laughs> at the end of the day. Except for the guy that's strong. probably it the most... Th- except, except for the guy that's probably the most consistent during the year, which might be Alex Bowman. Makes sense. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. There you go. So, All right. There we are. All right, that was exciting. Yeah, he's oh yeah, he's gonna get in the, yep. yeah, oh, yeah. Get in the playoffs. You watch right. you. Yeah. Bad Brad's gonna need a win. He's thirteenth right now. All right. So um that was all right, so on to Atlanta. All right, so next up. Supercars? Supercars at Newcastle. Yes. Supercars. I won't say supercars. V eight. <laughs> well the <laughs> Repco supercar challenge. Repco. We, can't call, we can't call it yes. the V eight supercar challenge. And for you, for you non-racing nerds, you need to get Motor Trend to get this. No, not no. You don't. <laughs> you, I, YouTube. Um, YouTube. 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 Go to their YouTube, YouTube channel. That's the best way. Well, the live events. Become a member. 
on their channel. Yeah, well, Motor Trend has them and live. And then you can watch stuff live. Well, yeah, this the is other, live, too. The other, the other no, bonus... No, nothing. For, no, 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 don't no. Don't bring up some legal way to do no, this. No, 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 no. I'm saying... No, no, if you, if this you is get, legal. If you All get right. Motor, Motor Trend, yep. you also get the WEC. You do. You get various other things. So with that there are, are that other series to watch. And, so if, and if you, you get dinner, yeah, dinner is, with races TV shows. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. This um, is true. <laughs> so I, I, <laughs> well, I, I, I encourage you to go get that. But if you're a YouTube fan, you can get <laughs> yes, it on YouTube. Yes. <laughs> anyway. It's just, it just works, works, it's works for me. It's, but, yes, it's fine. It's all good. Yeah, but it, it works great. Newcastle, season opener. Newcastle. Mm. Not just the season opener. And not in Indiana. <laughs> yeah, 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 and this yeah. is not Newcastle in north <laughs> northeast uh, uh, northeast uh, part of England. Yeah. This is Newcastle down on or, yes, on the east coast, I believe. Yeah. East so coast to Australia. It is, and it's it's a this is <sighs> this might have not been the best place to start a new car series. <laughs> mm, it's it's a no. tight tight street circuit. Yes, passing is at a premium. Premium, even in uh, the old cars. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's bumpy. It's hilly. Yeah. It's it, cool. There's a lot of I like, like connected corners. Oh, it's an awesome yeah. track to watch. Yeah. And um, you have to, in in the adage of rubbing is racing, <laughs> do kind of have to move the guys, which is kind of nice. Yeah. Now this this is um this is the first race for the new cars. Mm-hmm. Yes. What are they calling them? Gen Water three changes. Gen, Gen three. three. Gen three. They're not next. They're not Lever- just like leverage- the next cars. Le- lever- leveraging <laughs> NASCAR here. Uh, we're using we're using Camaros and Ford Mustangs. That's how you want to pronounce it? <laughs> Camaros and Ford Mustangs. Hmm. Okay. Yes. Un- unlike yes. no more not- Holden. No more Holden. No more Vauxhalls. No more nothing. No more Ford Falcons. Nothing. No. Yep. All right. Sad day. But there hasn't been a Falcon for a while, so right. That's true <laughs> yeah. too. Anyways, so uh, this has been a huge discussion point within the supercar world. These new cars. Um, yep. Some teams are enjoying it. Other teams aren't. Some teams alienated fans because they switched brands. <laughs> Walk and Char and Ready for One. Um, the main one. The main one, who was a longtime Holden fan now they're ford yep um mm-hmm. uh, is it still walking shaw andretti yes yes united so walking Zach, shaw andretti, andretti, andretti united, united. Yep. Oh, so andretti's involved in this yep. and they want to go with gm and cadillac the formula one interesting interesting you tell me okay. man I don't, I don't know what they're thinking <laughs> i don't know either anyways it's moving on i mean well Sean, they kind of go to nascar well, if Alpha Tauri is up for sale, well, let's let's not. You that's, know. That's, <laughs> let's let's not. Let's, 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 it's so much simpler. It's so much gonna simpler, right? I know. Yeah. Anyways, okay. so moving on. Um, so the first race, uh, the, the guys from um, Triple Eight, Red Bull. Yeah. Uh, pretty much dominated. And uh, they it definitely came to him. Came to him. <laughs> Shane Van Gisbergen <laughs> is inevitable. SVG, love him. Uh, and then uh, let's discuss what happened post race. <laughs> <laughs> uh, supercars shenanigans. Supercar shenanigans. There were protests over the use of dry ice. <laughs> it wasn't just. It wasn't the dry ice. It was how they reloaded their container oh so they went in the driver's side door instead of the passenger side door right. as it's oh. in the rule book so, so, they so let's across the driver so let's explain what happened first before yeah. we give our thoughts mm-hmm. yeah so like the new cars apparently are a lot hotter than the old cars yes um and shane has been you know causing a stir you know talking about it leading up to the race and so triple eight came up with a little bit different solution to give him more cooling and they showed it to the race director or one of the top guys in supercars and they got verbal permission to use it how they specified they would so apparently according to them that's what they did in the race but 
they refilled it or they did something and put more dry ice in their ice box, whatever's inside the car. And they did it from the driver's side instead of the passenger side. And that is apparently a no-no for some reason. That would be more of a procedural no-no, right? Wouldn't right. you say so? Right. Versus a performance I would, I would agree. enhancement thing? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think so. All right. So <laughs> now, now I get why really SVG was pretty... Anyways. Mm. So um, so Cam Waters won the race via protest, yes. which is fine. I like Cam. Drives the monster energy car, too. which is fine. Yeah. Um, he's a wheel man. He is a wheel man. He's, 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 he's damn good. So on Sunday, we had race two. And yeah. <laughs> this one was, was a better race. Still not a lot of passing. No. There was a good battle, though, between Chaz Mossert and SVG. Which SV, well, I think Cam S- was running him down earlier, yes. and then he bounced off a wall <laughs> and um, ruined his right. race. That's right. I forgot about that. But um, SVG and Chaz put on quite a good show, which they always do. I like Chaz. Chaz is a good driver. Yes. And uh, SVG, they did a little bump and run, and SVG kind of mm-hmm. bumped and run them in the rear, which was fine. It was good. You know, It good. wasn't even a bump it and was, run. It, it was just, just a, they he, were racing super he, close. They kind of connected yeah, a little bit. A little dent in the rear. And Chaz end. got him it's back. Fine. You know, yeah, he did. Get, it was Chaz, fine. Yeah, Chaz got him Mid- back. So, it did not yeah. as much as he <laughs> hoped for. But. Right. <laughs> I, right. I'd probably say nothing you haven't seen before in no, supercars. And, it's, and on right. that track with those size cars, yeah. it's, that's bound to happen. And it's that, man, that's just tough but the then then they had the the post race svg like basically gave that gave basically gave the highs do you have the quote um i don't have the quote but essentially all right hold on but he essentially he he gave the heisman to everybody but he he did did have a quote he says thanks to my team our cars were awesome all our talking was done on track today right (laughs) And then, <laughs> and then, the, the intrepid SVG, um, the intrepid Repco pit reporter for Fox tried to get more out of him, and Shane wasn't having anything to do with it. So it was pretty cool. <laughs> so, anyways, so we're off. We're off and running in supercars. Exciting. Yeah. I saw. Um, Good stuff. I can't. Yeah. Wait. Looking forward to. Uh, is Adelaide the next one? Yeah. So I think it's Formula One. Yeah, it's with the Formula One. I think it is a points round now. It used to be non points. Non points, because yeah, yeah, that's right. But um, right, you have to find an alternative way to watch it because uh, Formula One has the TV rights. So does that mean it's on F one TV? No. Mm, I don't think so. No, they don't show it. Hmm. There, so, there is. I, I think they show I, in Australia on the I same think, channel they I, show F one. I think Probably, it's on. But, it's so this Fox, which does all the races, yeah. typical like most of the races, but yeah. then there's what's the other channel? It's like seven, mm-hmm. seven sports has yes. it. I think has that one because I think they have the F1 race. So, anyways, all right, it's exciting. Yeah, and yeah, the new cars are they look nice. Way way, they they look good and they're way sketchier. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they've they some- were. They looked a lot more lively. Oh, there they, you go. They've somehow, correct me if I'm wrong. They've somehow managed to add more power and take away less grip. Oh, wrong. Or, so and, that's power. Less. Sorry, Fifty that's, horsepower that's what it is. less. That's what it is. <laughs> they, they've, they've reduced the power <laughs> and made it less grip. So they made it like a DTM car. Yeah. Mm. Can't. No, Sean. No, no, no. It's GT3 now. It's, it's, it's <laughs> no, no. Oh, no. I meant, I meant an old DTM car, pre GT3. Oh, okay. oh, still no. But no, because they have reduced grip instead of having a bunch right. of downforce. They okay. took downforce yeah. out. And... Right. <laughs> That's exciting. Okay, so we're on to the, yeah. That'll be good. Um, <clears throat> all right. Should, should we move to more controversy? Uh, not yet. Hold on. Not Hold yet. that thought. Um, <laughs> uh, just a quick Stroll? quick update. Uh, IndyCar did a test today at C- t- two day test at Sebring. Uh, the Bus Bros, McLaughlin sorry, and Sebring. Uh, sorry, Sebring I had Sebring on my mind. <laughs> yes, um, because that's all they. That's where they all. T- they they were at Barber. <laughs> Barber. <laughs> Barber and the bu- the Bus Bros, Newgarden and McLaughlin. Yeah. McLaughlin, sorry, Lee Duffy, um, were one two. 
Uh, Yuri Vips filled in for Jack Harvey, who is still nursing injuries from uh, the crash fest that was um, St. Pete. And uh, where did they ever a, say what injuries he had? Yeah, it was called a car landing on his head. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I mean, I would have details. Uh, well, yeah, that's. Pre- detail, I mean, pre- he was very fortunate. Thank God he had the halo and the uh, the windscreen. Right. Yeah. Man, that was that one was scary. But um. <laughs> He's pretty but shaky. He's still not. Scary. He's still not good. Yeah, the first one was frightening too. Mm. Um. So, anyway, so um. So that that happened. So yeah. But next is up is Texas for them on the yes. oval. Yeah. Which is the only, is the that's Indy, another track? So before the five hundred is, is the the road course before the five hundred or is that now in July? Yes, that's before the five hundred. It's still. It's yeah. It's the All month right. of May. It's in the month of May. Yeah. It's beginning before they. Go. They run okay. the Senate, the road course twice though, don't they? Do they? Yeah. They they, used, they did. They they, they, did. they oh they had the Harvest they, Grand Prix. They did. F- yeah, they I, had the Harvest Grand Prix. I thought, I thought right. that was for uh, just like like one of the COVID years. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. let's let's find out. All right. Keep keep, keep so up. um <laughs> just a I'm looking. couple other little news bites. Um, I'd like to congratulate uh, Formula Ferrari team boss, FIA president. And UN Envoy uh, for Motor Vehicle Safety, Jean Tot, on his partner's uh, big win at the Oscars, Michelle Yao won Best Actress for Everywhere at Once, and uh, Jean was there. Congratulations to the happy couple. That was great. Well done. Uh, also, uh, motor racing icon, American racing icon, Lynn St. James, who celebrated her birthday recently, was named Grand Marshal for the Sebring 12 hour, oh, the Sebring race at weekend, actually. Ah. So that's exciting. Wish we had Lynn in the booth instead of a <laughs> other person. <clears throat> and um, <laughs> brings a lot more to the table. Yeah. Okay. I can uh, tell you who NASCAR needs to get rid of, Sean. Uh, uh, well, Mike Joy almost did it this weekend. He almost wrote himself he out of the book. He almost did, man. That was cringy. I don't yeah, know. I don't know about I that. Like that. I, I don't, yeah. you know, um, respect Mike. That could have been done off live racing and could have been done on a on a preview or post race show just want to get back to that indycar <laughs> schedule they are racing twice twice of course really yeah. when's the second Why? one like it's such a terrible race it's first stupid first time <laughs> is, <change> is may 13th <laughs> yeah and then obviously the 500 follows that yeah then and that's the first time they go is round five the yep. the next time they go to the street the road course is round 14 in August. August. Okay. All right. It's such a waste of a round. And it's the same layout too. They could change it. They could go the other direction. Mm. Right. I was thinking they put that inner loop in instead of the chicane, and then they yeah, bypass yeah, yeah, the, the chicane, chicane is kinda, turn one. Kind of quirky. Yeah. Anyways, all right. But, okay. Yeah. Well, we get that straightened out. Um. All right. Uh. Anything else? Any other? Nothing. I got nothing on nothing, IndyCar. Nothing on IndyCar. That's it. So, so other than the bus bros are back. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's move on to, uh, well, let's talk about something that happened right after we recorded last week. Yeah. Which uh, it's, I think overall disappointing. Yeah. And um, I'm not exactly, I don't agree 100% with IMSA's, uh outcome or how they left it um so what happened was uh honda self-reported themselves and by that we mean they self-reported one of their um partners teams meyer shank who actually won the race uh for data this, min- this day- is for the daytona 24. Day, day 24 hours um i know it was a couple weeks ago but um the Apparently, Honda did this immediately after the race or within a reasonable amount of time after the race. Mm-hmm. Um, and then it was uh, a fact-finding mission from that point on. Um, basically, uh, what it came down to was that at the end of the day, uh, the Meyer Shank car was running lower tire pressures than what was recommended or what the recommended low tire pressure was. Uh, and um, the crew chief was manipulating the data as it came off the data off the tires that was being sent back 
through to the Honda engineers and to Michelin and then ultimately on to IMSA. Um, no matter how you slice it, that was just flat out cheating. Um, you know, uh, the, the individual, the crew chief was, he's basically been pulled from IMSA. He's hard cards taken indefinitely, indefinitely. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. And, uh, yeah. that's just pretty bogus. Um, Shank's been put on a 60 day, well, suspension till to probation till June. Mm -hmm. Uh, the team and the drivers were penalized by points. Um, essentially they are now last in GTP. Mm -hmm. Um, I think the piece that I don't like is the fact that they got to keep the win. Yeah. Um, so, uh, which means that somebody like Wayne Taylor was on the up and up, everyone else was on the up and up and somebody cheated and still gets to keep the win, keeps the watches and all, you know, all the glory. Mm. Um, I, this is the one problem I have and with, with this and Nate's going to jump down my throat on it, but IMSA is owned by NASCAR and NASCAR does the same thing in NASCAR. Okay, yeah. they penalize. Well, they don't. They don't pull the wins. They just penalize. So it's um, very rare for them I to think, pull a win. Uh, yeah. To, uh, I'm sorry, to but this. I mean, this is cheating. At, if this happened at yes. Le Mans, and it did happen to the Riley guys with the Ford GT a couple yeah, of years in Ben Goto. Yep. Yep. And they were like millimeters, a milliliters. Sorry. Uh, the fuel tank was yeah, bigger by like the bottle X. of a Coca Cola bottle. Yeah, it was a yeah, Coca Cola right, bottle, right. and it basically expanded due to the heat. Well, that was their fault. They didn't know it. They owned up to it, but they got their wind pulled. Um, they got the Which, watches pulled. They got everything pulled. Um, so that's my take. I, I'm willing to listen to anyone else on it, but I, I you know, I'm disappointed because it was Shank, and I, I like it. that's a hard hard working team. But yeah. But in the same hand, you gotta, you know, recognize that cheating is cheating, and you gotta I, I, look. I would look at it as look. You gotta, you did that the whole race. Okay, you were cheating the whole race, right? So I think it's, you know, you gotta look at that and think. Well, okay, how do we police this? I think it was pretty lenient. Like the win should have been taken away. Yeah. And, and, and you're Nate, doing it the whole race. Nate, you bring up a great point. This wasn't a standard two hour and forty five minute race. This was twenty four right. hours. Twenty four hours. So this is a pretty significant performance advantage. Right. And I mean they look, you know, I guess the other part is there was a ton of cautions too. So there's a lot of cars still on the lead lap. But on those restarts it was, you know, an advantage. You know, no matter what restart. Yeah, I, I would say the restarts the end, are probably more critical where that advantage would be. Right. Right, and so that you, you would see that not just that Acura's breaking away, but the Shank was really pulling away from the way they yeah. were Acura. So. Yeah, and they were they and and the thing was they were fast throughout the uh, the whole thing. Yeah. So the question really was, were they doing this the whole time? And I have a feeling, yes, they were, because if I, you, you just don't sort of wing, you know, roll up, try and do this, you had to practice how to do the data manipulation. That's the piece that gets me is that. You know, and basically what it is is they, what they were manipulating is the, the each wheel slash tire, the wheel, it has a tire pressure sensor in it. Just like everybody's a majority of street cars today that are sold all have it. So when you know, it gets cold, your tires go low, the thing pops on. They have those and it tells you where you, how your tires are inflated in that, and that's feeding data back to the engineers. Somehow he had figured out a way that he could manipulate it. When it's coming in at like 29 and they were supposed to be at 30, he was actually able to manipulate it back to 30 and stuff and make it like look. I mm -hmm. have no idea how it was. I mean, people talk about the unfair advantage. People talk about, yeah, there's always somebody optimizing something. <laughs> um, this this was blatantly cheating in a 24 hour right, race. Yeah. It, was, it was mapped out like and to the T. I give, sure it, it works. I give HPD credit. They they realized yeah, something. They it. looked at it and they realized mm -hmm. something was off. And they probably went and did a data comparison with the, the Wayne Taylor car. Possibly, yeah. I mean, I, that, well, why that has no the data? No, no. I I mean, considering you have the Cadillacs between two different teams running, yes, similar comparison. Why do you have a, a somewhat of a discrepancy between your and there your was a teams? performance discrepancy? Yeah, you know, and I'm sure the the Wayne Taylor guys are like, what is going on here? You know. Because I mean, essentially, they all mm -hmm. were sharing the the, the 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 Hondas were sharing. 
data accurate was sharing data throughout the testings and stuff like that they were collectively working together right. that's what hpd wanted but um they, they were fast like the whole time so mm -hmm. a bit disappointing um i'm not i'm kind of curious to see what's going to happen this weekend um it's probably going to be an icy reception in the paddock to say the least <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> yeah probably well, gonna lose some fans yeah it's not a uh, it's not a good look um no. you know and this is a team that's you know pretty prominent in indy car, um, in sports car racing and and as well as in the indy car i was gonna say the, the past year has really been good for them yeah so and they got a charismatic owner right. uh in, in mike uh who's kind of a man of the people mm -hmm. and uh jim myers for you know you know you know a retired g you know co-owner or whatever you want to call him of xm satellite you know this mm -hmm. is his kind of thing i'm sure he's pretty po'd about it too because it's not a good look for him yeah and his you know he's got his you know company on the car yeah so hey everywhere indycar so uh, i don't think it was indycar. just you know one guy doing this but you know obviously something was going on there and that's just it's not cool so yeah just just would have liked to see nask imsa slash net whatever <laughs> just pull the hammer on everybody you know mm -hmm. so anyways all right so enough of that uh so we'll slide into uh super sebring yes uh, oh, yes. more, more positive more news. positive news uh, <laughs> <laughs> um so we had wec kicking off the week uh kicked off last friday actually with the yeah. prologue uh Friday's, basically their preseason their preseason test yeah official preseason test uh um three days at sebring three or two three it was friday saturday sunday okay um there was a little bit of a controversy with the new the pit lane entrance yes for the wec cars they do not use the front straight pit they use the back straight which is the ullman straight they yeah. use the pit there that's been built for them uh they changed the entrance and it was sketchy um it's yeah. in a bad <laughs> spot the the original entrance was much better uh it was out of the um passing zone for when they come through the s's there this is right in the middle of the s right in the yeah. middle of that and uh it caught out a couple of prototypes uh i think one of the ferraris got binged there yeah. um which necessitated a chassis change in that car uh for the race um but um that's been rectified as of this today okay. that they changed that but um it was Reverted great reverted back to yeah, what it was what it was and but it was great to see the cars on track yes yeah that that's probably the biggest uh talking point that everyone's going for i mean it's it's it, glorious it is we got uh obviously some returning names from from last season so you have toyota pujo uh and glickenhaus um but this year uh we've got bicolis which other, otherwise known as van wall for this season making yep. a return which is great uh, to the top class and um, joining uh, the hypercar field for this season is Porsche, Cadillac, and Ferrari. So in total, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different manufacturers yeah. on the grid for this season. And um, the, the only other entry for this year that's going to be coming to hypercar is joda but they don't have their porsche 963 yet i believe it's spa yes so round three they'll have it they're yeah. the ones running the tom brady hertz yes. car yes. yes yeah tom brady yeah. the brady brand yeah um, <laughs> it's a good looking car though it's, it, it's it sharp is. looking they, they they do have their lmp because they are running lmp2 in the time, right. time then, being, uh, but they we, have their paint scheme on that when car. we get to monza Mm -hmm. Sato is going to make its appearance. That's right. Yeah, we're going to. Which is exciting. Yeah. So then, so that'll bring the manufacturer total yeah. up to eight. And uh, just getting to see some of the video that the Lanky Turtle posted. <laughs> Love that guy. He's, he's always at Sebring. Yeah. Um, posted. Uh, it was great to see some of the cars on track. It was. It was yeah. cool. Um, yeah. Just on track together yeah too. yes the, yeah you know I oh man really starting to kind of enjoy watching the peugeot it, it's just such a different looking car yeah it's a completely yeah. different concept Cars, which concept is, which, which is, is cool nice. which is great um you know um we've seen we saw the porsche because of um daytona we saw the uh cadillac because of daytona yeah um 
It's still nice the other Only if we saw the Ferrari. Ferrari. Huh? That could have happened. Only if we saw the Ferrari. That could have happened. Where? At Daytona? Daytona. At Daytona. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, e- it's, e- mean- it's easier if they do WEC first because they're a hypercar. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so so they can get... If they do WEC, then come over to IMSA. The balance... B- BOP can be... It's... They would have been a right. disadvantage doing the IMSA race versus doing the WEC race. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. So, it, but it was good, good, good to see that the um, the Cadillac sounded fantastic. It always does. And the uh, the Vanwell <laughs> always sounds nice. Vanwell's there. Jacques was Villeneuve. Right. Yep. He was right. Yeah. Jacques Villeneuve. <laughs> you, need, you need a you need an F one ch- world champion to to drive that car. So I believe um, <laughs> in the Glickenhaus. He was the slowest of them all, though. <laughs> yeah. Right. But this this kind of gets back to the car's design too. I mean the the. The main difference between uh, the Vanwell and the Glickenhaus uh, to everyone else that are, is running in this class, those are the two teams, two teams, two cars that aren't hybrid. Aren't hybrid, right? So no, no right. hybrid motor. Right. Um, right. Whereas everyone else is running a hybrid configuration. Now it's not, it's not the end of the world. They can still run the class. That's totally right. fine. However, um, there the Vanwell is still. In its BOP pro, uh, homologation process, process, yeah. Um, so obviously, it's off the pace. It'll probably need help to get up the, up to speed to the rest of them. But, I think they're so, looking to be balanced by Lamar. Yeah, yeah, and that's and that's the other thing too. I is, hope so. Is that um, this? What do they do? They they released WC released BOP for the first round, and then there's a BOP adjustment for rounds two through four. Four, right? So what you see now will get adjusted for the next round um and then f- following round four they're gonna release another set and the, the the other key thing is just it's great to see the volume of cars yeah yeah uh, right. in in right, the top right, in right. the top category yeah so yeah. good good on there there's there's a little well, i was just telling christian uh yesterday like 2014 2015 that was like the past kind of glory days for the hybrid Mm-hmm. Yeah, sports cars, and there were three competing manufacturers that really did anything, and that was awesome. So now we've yeah. got whoa, 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 seven. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> no, there no, was, no, there, there was there a was, fourth. There was a fourth. There was oh, a fourth. That's in competing. <laughs> <laughs> but um, oh, Nissan tried, the, and I was I very bummed that it didn't work out. <laughs> <laughs> the the other thing too is um, I, I think that's uh, that we should consider as well is that when when those three manufacturers. I, uh, for those years, uh, Audi, Porsche, Porsche and Toyota. Toyota, yeah. For Le Mans, they would show up with three cars. Three each. cars, yeah. So you would have twelve cars on track. So that, so for this, this Wait a minute, three times three, that's nine. Nine. Sorry, don't forget the other the other uh, <laughs> manufacturers. My bad. Um, but I mean, you you talk about a high uh, a high car count. I mean that it's it's not like we haven't seen about no. ten cars. It's been a in while. The class, yeah. But th- this time we have it with. M- with almost double the the manufacturers, manufacturers which is yeah. great yeah and it, and there's still serious talk that spa could see an additional a cat an additional cadillac kit in the grid there who would uh cgr oh they, they would bring another one yeah oh that'd be cool so uh let's talk about yeah, aren't they showing up at lamar too <laughs> they they are oh, so they got cars. well they're bringing yeah. so they got one one of their they got an additional car for an invite and then they Action Express got the IMSA auto invite. Yes, because that's Jim France. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's which is fine. So there's three Cadillacs, but that's all right. Yeah. Um, they're committed, so they're mm-hmm. in. Um, the only one that's not going is Acura. Yes. Because unfortunate. That has that has <laughs> that has to do with the Acura Honda thing. I gotcha. Yeah. So, so yeah, the, it's the Acura, it's the Acura, American. the Acura is HPD, mm. which is it's not Honda. So I don't know. They're trying to work something out on that. I Cause, don't know because this is this is the same really hope same do. discussion. It's, um, if you say that Peugeot would run over here, in yeah. The US, so they'd so run, they run in the simulator. S- they'd have, they'd run some other still. Are they Stellantis? Didn't Grand. we say that they were like they? Oh, or Nissan. Dodge? Actually, they're Nissan. Nissan. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. Nissan. Right. Nissan. Yeah. So they'd have to run. I mean, they could run it as Nissan. But then you got to. Well, I think. But then, you, but then you got to. Then you got to fork up the million bucks. 
Yeah. Well, no, they just run the yeah, Pujo. They, 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 or... they just run the Pujo as they'll just badge the Pujo as a as a Nissan. It's kind of like badging a Red Bull powertrain as a Ford. I think Acura and Honda are a bit closer. Yeah, re- close, it's just more it's closely just, related than they, that. But, like yeah, they literally all they need to do yeah. is change the badging. Well, <laughs> Put a yeah, but Honda it's, it's, on there. it's something to do it, with the worldwide. Yeah, yeah, something I don't know. It's, yeah, it's, I understand it, but it's kind of lame. But anyways, yes. So <laughs> all right. So and then you know we got the rest of the field. The LMP two fields really stacked, and then mm-hmm. GTE am sorry on and lmp2 is just pro pro am it's pro, pro, sorry, they, they got rid they got rid of the pro am class right no they got rid of the pro class in gte so there's no factory gte cars okay. yeah that's right so now it's gt it's pro am there um if everyone can follow along with the driver right ratings, yeah. um and then <laughs> LM, i think lmp2 is a, like i think you have to have like a silver or bronze driver. Okay. But you can have whatever, like there's some combination, like you can have two yeah. platinums and a bronze or something. I don't okay. know, something like that. Anyways, that's how you play the game. <laughs> I guess. But anyways, it should be a fun time. That'll mm-hmm. be, uh, that's kicks off tomorrow. Uh, practice. Yes. Tomorrow. And they will race on Friday. For the WEC. WEC. That'll be the 1,000 miles um, of Sebring. I believe the, the IMSA cars for the, 12 hours yes. they kick off on thursday yes that would be i believe guess. yeah so um they yeah. kick off thursday friday and then they have race. a warm-up saturday and then they race on saturday yeah. afternoon or sat late saturday morning um mm-hmm. and then the support races are co-mingled between tomorrow through friday maybe saturday morning is there a porsche cup race uh yes porsche i cup think i there. saw something it's like the American Porsche Cup and the World yeah. Tour Porsche Cup, mm-hmm. doing the one race together. I think. All right, you want to? Which sounds awesome. Do you want to talk about the IMSA? What your your thoughts on IMSA week, the GTP class? Uh, I, what I'm really looking forward to is, um, yes, we we just had the the preseason testing for uh, WC, but I, I what I'm really curious to see is you have two of the same top class right obviously there's slight distinctions but you have both both these concepts of what is supposed to come together for uh the top class in in sports car racing and uh the biggest question we can get answered is what are the times like and and are they the same going across from from uh um, series to series so from the prologue toyota topped the time sheets with a one minute 48.2 going around Sebring. So we'll see if, um, if the IMSA teams can, uh, can put that time down as well. And I mean, your, your direct comparison is going to literally be, be between the Cadillacs and the Porsches just because they're running in both series. So hopefully, um, we'll, we'll see similar lap times, but, uh, if not, that'll probably be the, the differences in rules because they, they do, um, both have different, balance of performances so between the two series so it'll be interesting to see how how it comes out and um i guess what the this convergence it, that everyone is talking about actually comes to fruition at some point in the in the next year or so so i think that i was reading some stuff about this today and i think imza had a test there in january yep and they, the Cadillacs were running, I think they ran some low 57s. And the Toyota team was talking about that. And they were kind of 57 curious. or 47? 47, sorry. 47. So it was like a second faster okay. than what they were running this weekend. Um, and the Toyota, some Toyota sports person was saying, you know, maybe it, there's different track condition, more rubber. Because the BOP is only like, I think, 20, 20, 30 horsepower difference, I think. Um, so they're curious to see when it comes to the WEC race, um, like if they have more pace or not. They're kind of worried because they're like, obviously we're fastest right now in this test, but maybe they hold some back. So, yeah, I'd, I agree with you. I want to see where the convergence is and see where the lap times are across both both series. I think that'll be really interesting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the um, I, I think unlike 
I, I, I want to speculate that unlike F1, there really isn't a whole lot of sandbagging with this because, I, I mean, everyone really needs to prove that their car can can last for 24 hours and, and much more because, I mean, the, don't forget, like, June comes up pretty quick for, for Le Mans, and that's that's the big race to win, win for uh, prototype racing. So I, right. I think... Uh, I think everyone is pushing each other and going pretty hard out yeah. there. So I, I don't. I, I think it's the track condition or something, something weird. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we are. They're running a Michelin supplying the same tire across both series. They are. Yes, I, okay. I read that today. Okay. Um, oh. So like they all have the same amount of uh, the, the, all their testing and everything, like yeah should roll over whatever that, makes sense but it's not the same tire from last year in hypercar is it that i can't tell you okay because i i can't i know i know toyota was um when when porsche and cadillac were were out doing all their testing in uh december and january I'd, i know toyota was making comments of well you know we're probably we're, we're starting out on the back foot we're not going to be up as far as these guys but i mean it's not like toyota hasn't been running a hypercar <laughs> programming they've been doing it for the past two years they know what they're doing yeah they, they've they've had this car concept for the past two years um so and now it's just they've they've come in with a with a new car or updated uh package um and uh we'll get we'll get to see everyone uh how they how they fare out for this uh, thousand mile race so just real quick um on the schedule everything kind of kicks off tomorrow Okay. Um, it's uh, who do we got for support races? Well, we, uh, Michelin Pilot Challenge and the Porsche Cup Series. All right. Um, so Porsche Cup has two races. Uh, Michelin Pilot runs on Thursday. They run. Um, it's a two-hour race this time around. Okay. Um, and that's on Thursday, and then we that leads into some with a tech. Um, practice um twice and then fia qualifying and then the final porsche cup race um on the day and then um friday is um essentially weather tech qualifying um in the morning and mm -hmm. then at, at uh 12 is the uh wc race right eight hours yeah eight hours thousand miles whatever comes first eight hours eight hours yeah, yeah. it Hopefully it won't. <laughs> hopefully it won't end, end on a red flag like it did last year with the rain. Yeah, that yeah. was a bummer. Yeah, right. so, it it is Florida. Anyways. So, so um, all right. Um, I think that covers us going there. Um, Formula One returns sure to, to Jetta. Yeah, the third time. Yes, it's, it's our third time. Third time. Um, I'm not expecting much different. There's no reason to. <laughs> the the well, only excitement is to see what Aston Martin's going to do. I I, th I, th I think it'll be a closer race. Yeah. I think it'll be a closer race at two I, between at least Red Bull, Ferrari, maybe Aston Martin, right? One of them anyways. So yeah. I just, I think there's your top five running order. Mm -hmm. I don't know about the Mercedes. I, I think they're still really behind the eight ball i mean they wrote a letter yeah. to their fans that meant nothing but <laughs> like what like what was that i don't i don't get that at all the so. isn't overreacting <laughs> <laughs> you know they have one bad year and they just crumble and have to apologize to the fans yeah toto toto's gonna gonna get his crying towel out no my he God, already no. has it out Oh, Mikey, no, no. No, don't do it. Don't do it, Mikey. It's so we wrong. We stayed the lap. Yeah. 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 Um, so, so uh, should we just do a quick round tail of... Yeah, I mean, I, I don't really have any... I don't, there really isn't any other... You're not going to... you No, no, no. no, no. Weekend, Predicted finish. So. Yeah, I mean, I got, I got... We can do picks. That's, that's Go fine. ahead. Do picks. All right. All right. <clears throat> I think... I think Ferrari turns it around. I think Leclerc Ooh, wins. All right. Um, okay. And then I think because street course, 
Perez is second. Max is third. Okay, Dark Horse. Is Aston Martin considered Dark Horse? Yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> Lewis Hamilton. Is the Dark Horse race is race, really who, 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 who else, who else? Could, yeah. could podium. Yeah, not. Okay. I'm not looking for a winner. Um. I'll, I'll run. I'll run the. I'll run the hype train, and I will pick Fernando. Fernando, okay. Derek, you want a couple picks? Oh, uh, yes, please. Um, I think it's going to be another Red Bull one-two. Um, status quo. Max or Max Sergio? probably winning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> I don't think right. I don't think Red Bull really cares to let Sergio win. If he has got if he has the pace, then sure. But I think Max is going to be right there. Um, probably get out front. Third, I would probably say the clerk. I mean, status quo, like I said. But my dark horse, my dark horse is going to be. I'm going to go with uh, oh, what's his dang name, Lance Stroll, your favorite. Ooh, all right, oh, all right. Ooh, wow. Such a shitty pick. Hey, he's in the same car. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, Alec. So Alec. 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 He was driving at Bahrain. Alec, you want to chime in with us? Uh, could you guys not hear me before? Oh, no. Yeah, sorry. sorry. What, what did you say? Nate was talking over everybody. <laughs> yeah, my bad. Sorry. Oh, dang it, Nate. No worries. <laughs> no, I was saying Lance Stroll was driving the car you know, very differently to Alonzo. We'll, uh, we'll see if he if he can compete with Alonzo this year. He is also but kind I of I think Alonzo is going to be <laughs> so far ahead. forgot about that. That might be a problem. <laughs> maybe if it's raining. Maybe. Ooh. Yeah. Oh my god. I just wanted to be spicy. You, you think it's gonna rain in the desert? That'd be interesting, though. <laughs> I, I, I would be. That would that would be a good. I, uh, I'd like be. that. Uh, um, I have another prediction. I don't think a missile's gonna hit ten miles. Oh, yeah. there, so. All right. Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Nate. All right. I don't. I, I'm just placing a bet that it's right. not. You said he happen, doesn't so. think. Yeah. Yep. So that's good news. Uh-huh. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. How about this, Alex? Who do you think are your top three? Um, well, you know, I want Alonzo to win, so I'm going to okay. say Red Bull win, too. Okay. Um, he's got, he's pretty much got the same podium. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, their car is just clearly ahead of everyone else. Um, it's going to take a really weird incident or, or one of them going off, uh, into the wall to, uh, you know, re- really change up the order at the front. Um, you know, I, I think Carlos might might uh, have something on Charles here. I mean, we'll see. They, yeah, you know, he's definitely shown some pace over Charles at points, but I mean, like Derek said, I, I think it's going to be status quo. It's with the way the cars are currently. I think that's the the top three are very clear. It's it's really a race for for fourth place in the points. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Nate? Uh, Sean, you're going to love mine. I think that there's going to be a disastrous race. Like, the first race was chaotic. And then the earlier on race, I'm thinking last year, Sergio Perez got pole position and didn't win. So I think something crazy is going to happen to maybe the pole sitter or just two or three of the top drivers. So I really do think you're going to see at least Fernando Alonso on the podium. And this time, I'm even going to say he's second, you know? Like, maybe not the win, because I think... Uh, I think it's going to be Sergio Perez kind of picking up the pieces, because you're going to. I think you're going to see a Max and Charles crash, or a Ferrari and Max crash. So then you're probably thinking, well, who's going to get third? I think you're going to see uh, actually Lewis Hamilton's kind of surprised in like because look something's going to happen. I think Ferrari's going to screw up strategy. We'll see. We'll see. I, I know there's a new French guy at the helm, but look, Fred, he's great. I think he'll do something to help, but I still think Ferrari's still Ferrari. 
and I don't think you're going to see Leclerc or Pablo on the play. So we're going to go with Sergio Perez winning, Fernando Alonso second, and then third, Lewis Hamilton. And then my dark horse, I would put... Got to think about this for a second. Um, it's like I want to. Uh, I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. It's about Ocon. It's about Ocon. That'd be my. Okay. Oh, all right. That's all right. a good one. That okay. was my second place dark horse. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm, uh... I was about to say Lance Stroll, but I was throwing up every because he did I'm good last year. <laughs> yeah, well, that is yeah, true. Yeah. I mean, so he can't surprise, and he was defending pretty hard against. Fernando mm-hmm. Alonso in, in the pink cars, but um, that that was a pretty interesting battle. I thought they were going to wreck watching that battle from last year. All right, I'm going to go Max. I'm going to go Carlos. I'm going to go Charles. Nice. And I'm going to go... Where's Sergio Perez? I'm oh going to go Lando. Oh, my God. <laughs> Still got hope for McLaren. Still All right. Hope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> My my hope for McLaren is going to kick in at Imola. <laughs> so. What did they have to deal with McLaren? Like, did they just miss real bad on the car? Yes. Or do they have like something. problem? Like, yeah, they just missed. Like, I'm, I, just, I'm just holding out hope that something happens. I but. heard I I listened to uh, I I, th- I think it was our our favorite friends, Box and Neutrals. Um, oh, the Box and Neutral guys, yeah. Podcast, yeah. They're back. They they yeah, had an yeah. interest interesting take of. Um, McLaren has okay. just been mid for the past five years. True. Because one of the years that they finished uh, fourth or third um, in the standings was when Ferrari was had to take their engine penalty, basically, for, for whatever they were doing. Um, and then the past couple of years, one, what was it, For- Force India? Well... Sorry, Racing Point had its fallout, so they they had a change around. Um, so that's that's a spot right there, and um, and then they like narrowly missed uh, last year um, with Alpine, and I and the the couple years prior, Ren- Renault was on its upswing too. So um, it's it, they were kind of just alluding to the fact that how it. It really hasn't been McLaren being as great as they look. It's more of just a they, they've just kind of been stagnant of where of where their performance is, and they really haven't moved too much. So everyone else has been bad. Yeah, yeah. What you're saying. So right. Right. which interesting take. Um, I, I can I can see both sides of it, but I think uh, I, I think it's clear that they missed some targets. I don't know how recoverable it is um because it's always hard being on the back foot but you know this is also where you would like to see in this this era of formula one with the cost cap that if a team misses then they might have another chance with added uh development time over the course of the year to bring some upgrades all right all right just a couple quick housekeeping things uh Got to mention uh, Jimmy Johnson. He'll oh, be joining yeah. the grid at uh, Coda in the NASCAR race. I told you this, Sean. I told you I predicted this. I saw this. Wow. Mike Quarkenfeller is next. <laughs> wow. I mean, wow. Um, uh, he'll join Jensen Button and Kimi Raikkonen on the grid. Yeah. So that'll be exciting. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, and, and Jordan Taylor. Oh, Jordan Taylor, right. And yeah, Jordan Taylor, Taylor that's right. right. Come on. <laughs> Josh Berry is not and Nate, that Nate's, time. G- Nate's going to tell me that Jensen, Kimi, and Jordan all have the same chance to win the race. <laughs> That's, they're all in the top five. They're all in the top five, according <laughs> to Nate. In reality, the only one that's being added to the grid that could do that is probably Jimmy. So, anyways. Yeah. Um, all right. That, that's good. Um, all right. I think we're good. i um, like to thank Alec Vidal from Touring Cart Championship, Derek Moore for joining us, and uh, we'll look forward to talking to you next week. Good night. Thank you guys for listening to the Redness Podcast, hosted by Christian Abbott, Sean Abbott, and Nathan Lavin. It's produced by Christian Abbott, and music is by Alex Wart and Harrison Taylor.